Hello everyone, it's Rebecca with a Bible Art Journaling Challenge for you. Thanks for joining me. As I head into week six with you, I wanted to focus on what it means for us to love each other. Last week we covered the love of God towards us, but what about the love that we have for each other? I thought the perfect place to do this was 1 Corinthians 13 verses 4 through 7 with a little bit of 8 added in. So 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7 says, Love is patient, love is kind, and it is not jealous. Love does not brag, is not arrogant, does not act unbecomingly, it does not seek its own, is not provoked, does not take into account a wrong suffered, does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. And 8 goes on to begin by saying, that love never fails. Before I talk to you about the verse for this week, let's talk about the creative aspect of what we're doing here. I used a baby wipe to apply Liquitex matte gel medium over the surface of my page for the day. And in the future for this particular technique, I won't be doing that. I will probably leave the page unprepared and I would encourage you to do the same. You are going to love this technique. It is so much fun. I've used this beautiful love chapter clear stamp set by Penny Black and I'm using two out of that set. I'm going to be using my Versamark ink pad, the clear one, to create a really sticky surface on this first stamp I'm using. Follow along with me here. I just want a sticky surface and I'll keep a secret what I'm going to be doing with it for a little bit later on. So once I got it particularly sticky and nice and juiced up, I pressed it on for as long as possible to ensure as much got onto that page as possible. And now I'm using a Ranger sticky embossing powder. I simply pour all of the powder that is necessary over the sticky ink that's left on my surface from the stamp and then pour away the excess back into my jar. What I'm left with is some powder that's adhering to a sticky surface. I use my pre-warmed heat gun to go over the surface just until it turns glossy instead of powdery and then finish so I don't overcook it. And now I have a sticky surface for gilding flakes, which is the fun part of this. Look at those beautiful foil pieces. Foiling is all the rage right now, and all I'm doing is being very careful to not touch any of my sticky surface, which you'll see later I did accidentally touch a little bit of it, but you just plop it on there and get a nice little sponge like this and rub over the surface of it very, very gently. You can see I'm hardly putting any pressure on it whatsoever and dropping more flakes on top to mash into the surface here and there. This will give an amazing metallic gold foil look to the stamp surface that I've created. And I've done almost no work whatsoever. It's perfect. It's absolutely beautiful. Spending time in God's presence is supposed to be fun, just like it is when we spend time with our closest friends. I have to admit, this particular technique is all about fun. And I encourage you this week, don't try and push yourself, just have some fun. Enjoy the process of being creative with God. You can see that there's some leftover gilding sticking around in different places, and I've just used a baby wipe to wipe it away carefully. I repeated the same process with the stamp that said love, but as the two letters were underneath the first two letters, I went ahead and stamped the first two, finished the whole process so I wouldn't have any difficulty with my stamping process, and then gave it a good clean before moving on to use the second set of letters. When I put the embossing ink on with my Versamark pad, I then masked off my paper with just a bit of scrap paper to ensure that I wouldn't accidentally get any residue of embossing ink elsewhere on my Bible page. I tested out this process before I started on some separate Bible pages, and I have to admit that I found that the process actually turned out looking more pristine and clear when I didn't prepare my page with any of the matte gel medium. And that's because the matte gel medium seems to cling to a bit of the powder, which means that there's more sticky surface that gets left behind on accident for any of the gilding flakes to stick to, which makes for a slightly messier look. I'm using a brush right here to just ensure that I get as much of that 
powder away because as soon as I get it hot, it will turn into a sticky surface. So I don't want that to happen. But really, if I was gonna do this again, I think I would go ahead and not prepare the surface and just be okay with the fact that this particular embossing ink will leave a watermark on the surface behind. So the page behind it will have an imprint of whatever I stamp, but I would get a clearer stamp on this particular page. So I think overall, it probably would be worth it. And if you find that there are any particular aspects of this that just don't turn out right, or you want to actually freehand some sort of design that you want to gild yourself, Versamark actually has what they call a Versam marker, and I'll link to it in my blog about this so you can go over and have a look at it. It's a Versa marker, and it's the exact same ink that you find on the ink pad, but just in pen form, and it's dual tip, so there's a a wider tip and a finer print tip, which would be perfect for going in and adding a little bit wherever you might have had a problem previously. I decided to add a little bit of dist distress ink because I felt like some color might do the page a little bit of justice. I wasn't quite sure that I was happy with the overall feel that the page was getting. So this was just my way of trying to add a pop of color and I wasn't really sure how it was gonna go, but I decided to mask off the scripture so that it would remain clear while everything else was colored. So you can see here, I've taken my Fiskars paper trimmer to take what I measured out and get it just right to cover over with a post-it note. So I used two pieces of post-it notes and when I was completely finished, I took the bottom one off which had lost half of its stickiness in the process of me measuring and cutting everything. And then just took off that top piece and it was perfect for laying down. It works really, really well. I love my little paper trimmer, it's absolutely awesome. I should mention that when you saw me using that heat gun previously, that's not a hair dryer and is very different. And in this particular instance, it's super important that you don't use a hair dryer because a hair dryer would blow hard on your surface and blow all your powder off that you've put onto your surface. So you need to have either an embossing gun or a heat tool like I had. Embossing guns are ideal for embossing powders because the heat is so hot that you can melt your surface quicker with less warping on your paper. However, all I have is a heat tool and that will get by in a pinch, but a hairdryer will never do because of the heat blowing everywhere. You don't want that to happen to your surface. You can see here that I've been covering my surface with distress inks. I'm using the color Vintage Photo and it's a really nice brown. I quite like it. It's probably my favorite. And I'm using the blending techniques I did in the week one challenge. So you can go back and view that if you want to see how I've done this. I've gone ahead and put patches of color around and then I go back in and add wild honey. And later you'll see that I just decided I needed a different pop of color. So I picked one that was embedded in some of the foiling and went ahead with some peacock feather, which is a bit of a blue color. So overall, I'm quite happy with the way it turned out, but to be honest, it's not my favorite page. And I think the issue is, is that everything's not pristine. I decided to go for a distressed feel. And frankly, I haven't actually dated this page because I hope to come back to it when I feel inspired later and add a little bit of extra something to the page. It just doesn't feel complete to me. And that's okay because it's art journaling. This is a process. We're doing it in our Bibles. It's about our time with the Lord. And I spent some time processing what the different aspects of what love is. What does the Bible say that love is? And that was the most important part of this. One of the things that we as humans are notoriously bad at is actually believing the worst about ourselves. And we judge ourselves with incredible ferocity sometimes. I would really encourage you to look at this and say, what am I doing that's right? How can I encourage myself in the journey to perfect love for others in my life? And begin to celebrate your successes rather than beat yourself up for what you do that's not quite good enough. Because we all have areas of growth and it's good to spend a moment and think through what we can do, what we can achieve to grow, but it's also important to celebrate our successes so that we're encouraged to move forward. Children need it, so do we. It's just part of the process. 
You'll see that distress inks were a little bit difficult to get on to that matte gel medium, but it was fun. I hope you like the page. You can see here where there's a little bit of the messy stickiness in other places, but it's really shiny and quite fun, and you can see why I've added some color. Here's the testing that I did with no surface, and you can tell it makes a real difference to the back of the page to have that matte gel medium, but you can decide what you'd like to do. And that finishes this week's challenge, which means it's your turn to create. Please come join me. If you found this video helpful or interesting, will you please give it a thumbs up, pop over to my blog, rate it, and give me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. If you're interested in any of the products I use today, head over to my blog. Thanks so much for joining me. I look forward to seeing you again soon.